All right, and so for those of you who are just joining, the event is being recorded. This is the BCIT Alumni Indigenous Panel, Indigenous Alumni Panel, thank you. And at 12.01, Za, if you could kick us off, we are gonna start with a welcome. So feel free to take it away. And uh, then really looking forward to speaking with these five panelists about their experiences at BCIT as well as in the workforce. So Za, over to you. Thanks so much, Ali. Um, hello, welcome today to today's uh, BCIT Alumni Association and BCIT Indigenous Initiatives and Indigenous Alumni Panel event. My name is Zah Joseph. I'm a member of Class and Nation, a DAC Health community in Northern BC, as well as Irish descent. My pronouns are he, him, and identify as a cisgender First Nations male. We would like to recognize the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish people, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. I am a guest on these territories. With humility, I strive to follow the direction of the Coast Salish people in all the work I do at BCIT. Thank you so much, and I'll pass that over to Ali now. Thank you so much, Sa. So everybody, I am so pleased to uh, sit amongst a, a group of fantastic alumni that I have had the opportunity to meet just over these last few weeks. Uh, and we only have an hour today, so I'm going to keep my opening words very short. Uh, it's, I'm, I feel very honored to be here with the five of you, and uh, we are going to start by having you introduce yourselves. So Chelsea, I'm going to kick it over to you, and if you could give us your, your name, your Indigenous ancestry, your community, graduation, and job title, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chelsea Barron. Um, I'm from the Chilcotin Nation on my mother's side, as well as Scottish on my father's side. Uh, I'm a Red Seal machinist uh, who just recently began a new career uh, at BCIT as an instructor within the School of Energy. And I just want to say I'm very honored to be a part of this panel, and I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say. And um, I just want to say I'm very grateful to be here. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here, Chelsea. Brittany, over to you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Brittany Denenzio. Uh, on my mother's side, I am Iroquois and uh, German, and then on my dad's side, um, Italian. And um, I graduated in 2019 from the Occupational Health and Safety Diploma Program. And now I am working at First Transit Vancouver Handy Art as their safety advisor and risk management advisor. Thank you so much, Brittany. Jordan. Hello, I'm Jordan Robinson from the uh, Housed and Heshkwit Nations on Vancouver Island. I am currently a program assistant for the Teachings in the Air podcast, which is a podcast backed by the PHSA, Provincial Health Services Authority of BC. And all I do is edit and try to put the podcast together. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's nice to meet you all. Thanks so much, Jordan. Looking forward to hearing more about that for sure. And Nick, over to you. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. I'm Nick Johnson. I'm from the Métis Nation. My father's side is Norwegian, hence why I look like this. I look less white in reality. I just have this weird light going on. Um, I graduated from BCIT from the Civil Engineering Diploma Program in 2019 and I currently work as a cost estimator and project coordinator for a consultancy called Charter Project Delivery Inc. We work on major projects for the Ministry of Transportation as well as for TransLink. I'm happy to be here and look forward to hearing a bit more from everybody for their experience. Thank you, Nick. And not, not least, but, but last, Rob, if you could uh, please give us an introduction. Yeah, thanks, Ali. Nice to see everyone. Um, Rob Schultz, um, Métis Chibouin on my mom's side and German on my dad's side. And I'm joining from New Westminster in the traditional territory of Kikite First Nation. I graduated in 2003 from the, um, sorry, with a diploma in computer systems technology. And currently I'm a, an IT enterprise architect and also the founder of shopfirstnations.com. Fantastic. So Rob, let's uh, let's start with you. And I know we we've all decided that this is going to be a bit more conversational. And you mentioned that shopfirstnations.com, something that uh, 
is obviously a fantastic resource, especially as we enter the holiday season. I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about when you first landed in your program and maybe how you are, how you got to where you are today. All right. Uh, yeah. So actually, um, you know, it's interesting that Nick's on the the call because I had a strong interest in civil engineering when I was in high school, and. Uh, and one of the last classes I took in grade 12 was Infotech and that kind of a last minute change in direction for me. So I started in websites out of high school and that was more on the graphic design side. And then I kind of got more interested in the coding side. And that's really when I started to look at BCIT as an option and how I got into the CST program. And uh, yeah, from there, then I you know, graduated, worked several years at uh, Save On Foods and then with the a uh, commercial real estate company downtown as well uh, the last couple of years uh, up until uh, now when I decided to, to start Shoppers Nation in Stockholm. That's fantastic. So, I mean, maybe uh, Nick, considering you landed in civil engineering, how did how did you come to land on that program as Rob kind of alluded to? Uh, well, dissimilar to Rob, when I was in high school, I didn't plan on doing civil engineering. I actually went to UBC straight out of high school and did uh, microbiology and immunology. I uh, thought I was gonna go into med school and ended up in mining. I worked in the mining industry for six years and then uh, I just got tired of traveling and wanted to be based locally. I had some friends that worked in the civil industry and they said, well, you can work out of downtown and, and live a, a relatively normal life rather than working shift work in the middle of nowhere. So uh, I looked into UBC and I looked into BCIT and then based on BCIT's uh, more practical approach to education, I decided I wanted to pursue the civil engineering program there instead of at UBC. And it's been a great decision. I think that you, the practical knowledge that we gained compared to going to UBC and learning a lot of more applied sciences was a great uh, opportunity and it just seemed seemed like a better fit for me as a mature student. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still working. I was supposed to be going back to BCIT in September of this year, but with COVID, I decided to continue working at my current role and I'll likely be returning September of 2021 now. The applied approach there that you talk about, Nick, is definitely something you've all touched on as we've led up to this. And I know that you uh, were also a mentor to Jordan. So Jordan, is there any of those applied skills that really called to you when you entered BCIT and how are they serving you today? The actual um, work approach, like the hands on the applied, yeah, it, it helped me a lot because I had to, to kind of learn as I went. And that's it, it makes it easier for me to learn, especially when we're speaking and like there were things I was uncomfortable doing and BCIT really helped with that because I, I was a stiff talker. Like I didn't, I wasn't as free voice, they say. So it, it did help and it helped me grow in being able to um, share things and be able to speak freely a bit more comfortably. Thank you. That's a great answer, Jordan. And maybe I'll pop over to Brittany here because as someone who speaks freely, I know that your applied skills and learning also uh, really assisted you. So if you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, a little bit about your journey and how you landed at BCIT and how those applied skills are helping you at Handy Dart right now, Brittany. Sure. Um, I actually ended up going back to school because I had an infant child and I, like Nick, didn't want to work shift work and you know, childcare for everybody, Indigenous or not, uh, is hard to come by nowadays. So uh, I chose BCIT because I wanted something that would be practical, that I knew would give me a sustainable and, um, and stable lifestyle, and both, you know, financially and uh, work-life balance. So um, I landed here because of my kid, <laughs> um, which works out because I love what I do. Um, and some of the things that it, it being at BCIT helped me with like applied wise is being able to do an immense amount of work in a short amount of time. So um, my program and I'm sure all programs at, programs at BCIT are very intense. It's not always difficult work, but it's just a lot of 
it, it's quantity. Um, and so in, in my role today, you know, especially with COVID and having to change gears very fast and learn all sorts of things in a short amount of time and being able to, to use my time, uh, effectively um, was something that I definitely did learn while at BCIT. So that's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a great journey. Well, I appreciate those honest answers. And I mean, you're certainly thriving as is Nick Jordan and Rob. And I'm curious, Chelsea, from a, from an educator's perspective, somebody who is inside the quote unquote four walls right now, how are, how is that feeling for you and your journey? It's feeling really great. You know, it's it's completely different. Um, I've had to adapt from being in industry for, you know, seven years or so. Um, and now actually taking all the skills that I learned from BCIT in my trade uh, to now taking all that and now trying to teach others and pass down the knowledge and kind of, you know, be a mentor to the next generation of uh, skilled tradespeople. So being at BCIT, I've always enjoyed it. Like as soon as I graduated, I instantly sort of missed, you know, going there. And I'm like, that, that was a great chapter of my life. And I had so many great memories and the Institute was just, you know, overall just a very healthy, happy environment. Um, it was very inclusive. So I, I, it was not a hard decision at all to return uh, back to BCIT as an instructor. And I'm really looking forward to this next chapter and, you know, connecting with other people like yourselves. And I'm just very excited. And I, I feel like the future is bright and we're all coming together. So overall, I'm really happy. Thank you, Chelsea. And you touched on such a important piece there in mentorship, uh, which is something that I think brought all five of you together in different ways um, as Indigenous learners and students and now alumni. And I'm wondering if we can go back to Nick because I know you were a mentor uh, at the gathering place at BCIT. And if you can tell me a little bit about that mentoring relationship and what it mean, meant to you then and now. Uh, yeah, so when I, was, when I was at BCIT my first year, um, I was going to uh, the gathering place on a regular basis, just trying to be involved in the community and, and uh, just be a, part of, be a part of BCIT as a whole. But, but for me, more importantly, with Indigenous services, which at that time was going through the name change and all these other things. But I had um, a great mentor named Justin in my first year, and, and he made me really kind of understand the importance of giving back to the community that has given to you over the years and, and taking on the responsibility of, of trying to uplift the other people that, that are from your community that may be struggling or may be feeling like they're in a foreign environment. And when uh, Indigenous Services reached out to me and said, do you want to be a peer mentor? I just thought, yeah, that, that sounds great. Uh, I'd love to do it. I'd love, I'd love for other people to have the experience that I had in my first year. And especially for people coming from remote locations and smaller communities, it's a huge difference to go from living in, uh, you know, on a reserve to suddenly being in Vancouver or Burnaby in the case of, of BCIT. But it's a huge culture shock and I just wanted to be a part of the making it feel a bit more like home and then from there it led to a bunch of other involvement with BCIT which I loved to do while I was there and it, and it kept the the intensive program requirements kind of as a afterthought rather than being the only thing I think about all the time and just leading to more and more stress so even though it was more effort I think that it, it added to my work-life balance or, or my study life balance at that time, which was which was great for me and, and hopefully great for the community at large. Yeah, what an important point, how mentorship can give back in, in those ways of mental health that are so important. And I'm wondering, Jordan, as, a, as the mentee, are you able to comment on how that assisted you? It helped me greatly because um, I, I've told a lot of people when I go somewhere new, like a school or something, the first thing I looked for was like an indigenous center. And that's what I did at BCIT. And as soon as I walked in, I, I went a couple of years before I even like actually enrolled in BCIT. And I was greeted with, hey, what are you interested in? Let's help you look around. And it made me feel really comfortable with my decision of BCIT. And then when I returned, 
um, the mentors were in the room and they greeted me instantly. Hey, what are you in? And it, and it helped me so much because in, in a time of change and like intense, it was intense workload because I never did schoolwork for a while. These guys were there with a hello and how are you today? And that helps immensely almost any day. Yeah, absolutely. Brittany, how did, how did mentorship shape your journey at BCIT? Oh, I'm going to get you to unmute there. I said turn off mute. Sorry. Um, it helped me in creating relationships with other people. So although I do have an easy time talking um, and giving my story, I don't have any qualms with talking about my life and my journey. Um, I have had troubles um, connecting with people and creating relationships. It usually takes me a year or more to um, create a new friend or to feel connected to other people. And um, being a mentor allowed me to, to, to create those relationships a little bit easier and a little bit faster because, you know, when you're teaching somebody else, you're actually teaching yourself. And so, um, I just found that when at my time at BCIT, when I was a peer mentor, I felt more connected to people um, and I felt like I was able to create those relationships better. So it it really helped me in that part of my life because I still have hard, a hard time connecting with people and creating friendships, um, not because I'm a poor, not because I, I don't like people. <laughs> um, it's just, it takes me a while to warm up to people. And when you're a mentor, you you have to sort of cast that aside and just, you know, throw yourself out there and, and create relationships because that's the only way that you're going to make a difference. So um, I think it helped me on my interpersonal relationship building. That's, that's the biggest thing I can think of. Thanks, Brittany. Uh, Rob, I wanted to circle back over to you because I know that you are also, you know, you're a big role model for the field that you're in, in terms of graduating from the School of Computing and Academic Studies. Uh, can you talk about how your mentorship has shaped, you know, who you are as a mentor, an alumni mentor now. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I think, I guess, um, we're just kind of fortunate, I think, with the experience I've been able to have in IT, and I just, you know, feel, um, I guess, fortunate that it's a good time. I hope that I can, you know, reach back and, you know, be able to, you know, share some information that I have and experiences through IT and, you know, not look at it Kind of through my, through a corporate lens so much anymore, but more of a, you know let's create more relationships in the community. You know, there's more and more I think technology projects out there that are you know culturally sensitive and have indigenous communities in mind. So I think it's kind of a, a blend of you know working on IT that that is more culturally um, sensitive and um, helpful for indigenous communities, but also um, you know anybody on the line or um, in the future, um, Indigenous students interested in technology that I, I really hope, you know, in some small, humble way that I'm able to help or, or you know, encourage um, technology as an option for Indigenous people going forward. Thank you so much. I, I know when we all talked beforehand in preparing for this webinar, we, we all agreed that starting as a student is terrifying, but then also, you know, graduating is at lends a, a new opportunity, uh, but can also be scary as you move into the workforce. And I'm wondering, Chelsea, if you want to touch on any of your advice that you may have for alumni who are transitioning to the workforce and uh, what exciting things the world has kind of pointed out for you. Yeah, so my advice for um, alumni uh, entering the workforce is just to understand that, you know, you have to work hard and you'll have to start from the bottom and work your way up and um, I really think it's important to show a real interest and ask as many questions as you can to your mentors at work or your colleagues. And, you know, that's what really has helped me grow as a machinist and as a, a skilled trade person is, you know, I wasn't afraid to ask for help and ask the journeyman I worked with questions so that I could grow uh, and get more confident in my field. And I think without the, the mentors and the, the help I've had along the way, I wouldn't be where I am right now and able to be an instructor and to have the self-confidence in myself to, you know, really know my, my craft. Um, 
and also just you know don't let other people's perspectives of what you can and cannot do affect your goals and your dreams you know being uh, a young indigenous woman in a male dominated industry um, you know sometimes you feel like you're a little bit different than your your peers or the people around you but you you can't let that uh, hinder your success or let that uh, let that hold yourself back from reaching your your goals and um, I just say it's just, you know, if you have something you want, you need to go for it and, and don't let other people uh, and their ideas of what you can and cannot do get in the way of that. That's a good sound bite, Chelsea. Over to Jordan. What, uh, what advice do you have for alumni who or new alumni who are entering the field as a recent graduate from BCIT? it can what what your initial vision is it can work because i i made a a few year plan which never happened before before i i hopped into bcit i was cleaning and doing night school and i made this this like two year plan which I, i've never done but at the end it was it was get a job after taking a summer off and covid hit graduated struggled with that a bit but I had to take the summer off because I couldn't work. And then in September, I happened to land this, land this position I'm in. So I felt extremely lucky because it's, it's an indigenous team as well. And it was not, it wasn't part of the plan, but it can happen. That's, that's the thing is I, I was feeling, you know, kind of, kind of down throughout the summer because I wasn't sure what the workforce was going to be like, because everybody's struggling, but it, it can, if you apply yourself and you, you actually utilize your skills that you achieved in, in BCIT, I, I remember cleaning up the resume with everything I learned using the application skills that from, um, indigenous services you know being a mentor being on student council and then my resume just looked way better than previous so entering the workforce as long as you actually um look at your skills and and find what makes you unique and you entering the workforce i mean it lets the employer know that you're very very unique. And that's what I wanted. I wanted people to hire Jordan and not not just a statistic or anything like that. So I felt lucky in my position. Thanks, Jordan. And yeah, you were an involved student. And I think, you know, Nick is somebody who you had a relationship with. I'm wondering, Nick, you know, as a as a person who has done really well in their field and as an involved student and involved alum, if you can talk a little bit about your transition to the workforce as well. Yes. Yeah, so when I was at BCIT, um, I know I don't know about other programs, but our program we had a lot of industry days or industry nights or or some sort of career fair, of some of some uh, kind. And I felt like it was almost overwhelming the amount of um, options there were. Obviously, with COVID, that's not going to be the case, and I think it's going to be it's going to be very difficult for for graduate for students currently to make career fairs meaningful being online. Um, but transitioning from being a student to going into the into the workforce, I think the biggest thing is, as Jordan was mentioning, is is rather than just being a, a resume on a desk, is try to be an individual. Um, try to make your your extracurriculars and, and the things you do because you love to do them the forefront and and not worry too too much about oh I don't meet the the minimum requirements for this application so I better not apply or I shouldn't reach out to this person because they're so much uh, higher up in the industry than I am but like be be yourself and 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 be open and honest with people and I think it's going to get you a lot further than if you just say well I, I got all A's so I should be hired and I'll just give my resume and not actually speak to anybody and that'll work. Unfortunately, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, you get hired because of your personality and, 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 and what you've done in your life, not because you were top student in your class. Um, I don't know if it was ever that way, but it seems like people believe in uh, merit-based uh, employment, which I'm, I'm afraid to say it doesn't actually work that way. So if you're doing 
you're schooling for the sake of getting the best possible mark and it's taking away from the rest of your life, you should probably stop doing that and make yourself a holistic person, do some volunteering, get involved with people and, and projects that you care about. Um, and, and things will work out because you're involved and you're engaged and you, and you have things to talk about other than, well, when I was in this class, I learned this thing. So you should hire me because I now know this thing. Uh, it's just not really the reality that we find ourselves in, especially with COVID. I think it's going to be people are looking for someone who is a self-starter, is willing to be managing their own workload and, 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 and work stream with people remotely and things like this. So it's going to come from a place of understanding where you're at rather than just having a credential. Absolutely. And I see, Brittany, you're nodding along there. Is there information on maybe that more holistic approach that you agree with or? I, I'm, I just love the way that Nick always talks. He's just so got so much knowledge and wisdom. So, um, you know, that the holistic approach, you, you can't, I mean, I was a mom who had a three-year-old when I started at BCIT. So I couldn't, I couldn't do the, the late nights and, and working on projects with your group members at three in the morning before the day that it was due. Like I couldn't do any of that. And I, made a decision at the beginning of my, you know, career at BCIT or as a student at BCIT that I wasn't going to be that person that needed to get all A's. I, I you know, I graduated with distinction, but that wasn't because I sat there every day and studied and wanted to get the best marks. Like there was other more important things in my life, like taking care of an infant child. So, you know, the other things that you do, the people that you meet, the the networking that you make, mentor like mentoring, talking to people around BCIT, you know, having a life outside of school is going to make you more employable because, in my opinion, because you're not, you haven't, you know, you're not not a square peg in a circular hole. Like you're, you have so much more to give. Your life experience when you go to an interview yeah, that's nice that you can say, oh, well, I, I had, I graduated top of my class, but then, well, what else did you do? Did you, you know, did you meet anybody? Did you connect with anybody? Did you, did you create connections? Did you change anybody's life while you were there? Like, what did you do to make a difference? And it's great that if, if you want to be the person that gets the, the best grades in your class, but you have to remember that there's so many other things that people look for nowadays. They want to make sure that you're the right fit. And that is about behavior and the way that you connect with people. And you don't learn that, you know, there's, um, there is book smart and then there's street smart and, you know, you got to somehow be in the middle there. And so I do agree with, with Nick that, you know, you can't just be all about the books, the books, the books, there has to be more about you for people to, care I don't know that sounds terrible but you know you if you for example when I got when I was in the interview for my current job um the last question they asked me was um well why should I hire you you know we have all these people who applied and we have all these people who you know would be great for this job but why should I hire you and I was taken aback but the answer I gave was, well, it, you don't know me, but if you did know me and you got to know who I was and where I've come from and how far I've come, you'd understand that I'm one of the most resilient people you'll ever meet in your entire life. And later on, after I got the job, um, the guy who interviewed me said, you know, that answer that you gave, only people who actually know what it's like to have life experience and go through hardships can give that answer. Like no one says I'm super resilient. So that's why you should hire me. Cause you know, that's the life that I've known. Like I've had to overcome and adapt and, you know, that's more of a hireable thing for someone to, to be, um, you know, someone's going to be resilient that they can overcome the small things and not get stuck because a project gets put on hold. So sorry, that was really long, but I just think that you have to have life skills, not just school. 
Thank you, Brittany. And I think that uh, that word resilience is something that uh, must have hit home with everybody here because everybody gave a smirk and a nod at that point specifically. And I'm, you know, we had one question that was uh, really more general and maybe we'll lob it over to Rob first. And, you know, as an Indigenous learner, what, what general knowledge do you wish you could share with new alumni or students who are, you know, seeing themselves in your position or a similar position? Yeah, uh, actually, if, if you don't mind, I'll just add on to the, the last question a little bit as well. Um, you know, I, th I love what everybody has said. And, you know, in my own experiences, you know, that teamwork and adaptability that BCIT, um, it really gave you the opportunity to, you know, to learn and exercise. And uh, the, the one thing I wanted to add is just, you know, there's a lot of Indigenous, I think, or more and more professional associations out there. So after you graduate, you know, like there's an Indigenous Culinary Association now. There's new groups for Black, Indigenous, people of color in film and media. So, you know, have, have fun with your classmates and, you know, establish those relationships and life skills. But just remember to keep, uh, keep networking even after you graduate. Keep in touch with your BCIT classmates, but also look for, you know, professional associations in your area of expertise as well. Um, so I guess that kind of segues into the question as well the general you know knowledge is just you know keep keep networking keep those um so you keep your uh relationships going and uh be involved in your community um you know whether it's an indigenous or professional and uh the, the other thing i want to mention again i'm a little bit biased but i think technology is such a great option for indigenous uh, people as well um you know, not only like I think technology itself is a, a good career, regardless of your your background. But uh, I really think going forward that Indigenous people can you know lead the way in creating you know more fair systems and software and algorithms out there um, by applying traditional knowledge and you know community benefits. You know, thinking of you know environment and relationships and communities, not just you know is this software going to make money kind of thing. So. A um, bit of a plug there for computer systems tech, but uh, I, I do think it's a good option. And you know, um, people are you know, youth are learning technology. You know, and stuff that I learned at first year BCIT, they're probably learning in like grade seven now or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I hope that helps. Absolutely, uh, I think it helps greatly, and I think you're you know definitely a mentor and role model in your field, especially with Shop First Nations as a as something that is, you know, needed on the internet and needed for all of us. So I'm gonna bump over to Chelsea here and ask you what general knowledge do you want to share? Sure, yeah, just to <clears throat> add on to Rob's uh, networking comment, I think that's really important. Um, for me, I was always kind of, you know, I had to kind of break out of my shell when I was a lot younger and uh, learn to, you know, accept change and, get out of my comfort zone. So I, I really believe that pushing yourself out of what you're comfortable with is the only way you're going to really grow as a person, whether it's at work or in your um, social life. Um, <clears throat> so I basically, you know, I there was an opportunity a little while ago where I was asked to work with uh, Work BC, and it was going to be a series of, you know, photos and videos that were going to be put online and, um, you know, people were going to see it and it kind of made me a little nervous because I'm not really like a, I'm not really that kind of person where I like to have my face all over the place, but I, I knew it was a good opportunity and I, I liked the message that they were trying to get out there, you know, to promote trades and uh, post-secondary education. And I felt like the Indigenous side of it could really go a long way as well. And maybe I can inspire other people. So my my comment here for just general advice and knowledge is just to push yourself to get past that that wall that you kind of put up for your, your little safety net because because I decided to go through with this and put myself out there it ultimately led to my opportunity as being an instructor at BCIT which I never thought was possible because it just seemed like a dream and you know it would take so, like, I didn't know if I could get there but because I put myself out there new opportunities arise and I am where I am now because of that and yeah just always try to push yourself to keep learning new things and putting yourself out there and you never know what uh, the universe has in store for you so that's my piece of advice and some general knowledge I'd like to share. 
Thank you, Chelsea. That's beautiful. Jordan, over to you. General knowledge. Um, mine is feels a little too simple. It's it's appreciate your time. Because um, when I was in my teens, if you asked me about school, I would have said I was never going to do it or anything like that. And it took a lot of time. I started when I was 30, but I did it now. And I don't regret it one second. I, I BCIT can eat up a lot of the time, but I appreciated that as well. You know, with all the excess staying late, working on things, group projects, and it, it taught me connection. It taught me how to utilize time, which I, it's skills I didn't pick up when I was younger. And it took 30 years, but I got here and I appreciate the time I utilized at BCIT and the time everybody here in the Indigenous Services took to you know, interact with me, help me, or even just say hi. And that's, that's what I learned to appreciate the most because my time spent there and my time leading up to there got me where I am today, which is, it feels like, it feels like gratification of the time spent so far. Thank you, Jordan. I'm gonna pass it over to Nick. Uh, I'd like to speak to a couple different groups and give them advice because um, I don't know exactly who's in the call, but I'm going to assume that there's some BCIT staff and faculty. So I'd just like to, to say to all of you, thanks for, for actually seeing students as students and not as numbers or, or, or just uh, people that fill seats. Um, I felt like my time at BCIT was very meaningful and I, and I, from talking to other people, I think that they've had that similar experience. Um, so I, I do really appreciate the fact that the institution tries their best to give you the tools to succeed, not just in your field, but as a, as a human being. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks to that. I'm not sure who was all on the call. Um, for Indigenous uh, people, whether you're a student or, or you're in the work environment or wherever you are in your life, I would just say, don't be afraid to stand up and, and, and speak to power. Uh, don't be afraid to be the change that you want to see in the world, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of muzzling that happens in the world. And, and even if you feel like you're not the, the best person to say something, if you're the person there, you're the best person to say something. So I think that that, especially with the election being so close in the States today, that's on my mind. Um, just honestly, people will always try to put you down to make themselves look better or because they don't understand you or the, or the group that you represent. But don't be afraid to speak up and be that change. Um, for students, just do things that you want to do, even if you don't feel like you have the time to do it, because it will make you a better person. If you constantly say no to opportunity, you will not get another chance. And if you say yes to something that you don't think is going to be the direct thing that leads you into a job, when you say yes to something, people remember and they ask you to do other things. Like when I started at BCIT, I thought, wow, this program is intense. I have eight courses every semester. How am I going to make this work? Uh, I was a mature student, so I had other things going on in my life. And I was, for the first little while, kind of reticent of accepting more responsibility. And when I finally said, you know what? I want to do this because the people asking me are people who I care about. And I want to do it because they think that I would be good at whatever it is, whether that be a peer mentor with Indigenous services or sitting on BCIT essays, council for students as the Indigenous counselor, or being the president of the Indigenous Culture Club. Um, all of that work was a lot of work, but it was worth it. And my grades may have suffered, but I did okay. It was fine. You know, I ended up being valedictorian of my year for my school. And it's not because my grades were the best, it was because I actually cared about the success of other students and the success of BCIT as an institution. So I think wherever you are in your life, just say yes to the things that make you scared. That's such a beautiful and poignant piece of advice, Nick. And uh, 
I think, you know, it's something that we can all remember, whether it be student, alumni, staff or faculty, those yes opportunities are certainly, they don't come knocking all the time. Brittany, what general knowledge do you wanna share as the last person to answer this specific question? General knowledge, pardon me, general knowledge. Um, I guess as a student, um, it's really important that you be an advocate for yourself, especially with so many people dealing with mental health and not knowing where to turn to. And sometimes the support and resources that you should have available to you um, aren't as readily available to you as, as we would like to believe. So I think my only piece of advice or my general knowledge for BCIT is that if you do suffer from mental health and you are a student, um, it's okay to be an advocate for yourself and to make sure that people who are supposed to help you actually help you. So sometimes, you know, when I was at BCIT, I, I had to advocate for myself um, on, you know, with the um, access and diversity, I think that's what the Disability Resource Center is called now. Um, it's it's okay to be to admit that you need help and to not suffer in silence because if you do the only person that you're hurting is is you so it's okay to be an advocate it's okay to be a bit of a bulldog and um you know come across as someone who is um not the bad person but like just be your own advocate be okay with not always being liked and you know nagging people about the things that you need um because if you don't do those things you're the only person that you're hurting and in all honesty the people that work at bcit that's their job to help you anyway so if you need to um, remind people that that's their job it's not always nice to say it that way but um you know just be an advocate an advocate for yourself and don't don't ever forget that you are important. And although there are tons of other students that everyone is dealing with, like you do matter. And sometimes you're the only person that that is there for you to say that, like I matter and I need help, so please help me. So that's my only general piece of knowledge. Be an advocate for yourself and, and never put yourself last because um, if you do, you're, you're just hurting yourself. Yeah, absolutely, Brittany. You are not a bad person for advocating for yourself. And I think that is a, another wonderful point that we can all remember and take home for us. Um, we are, so I've asked the folks who are joining us uh, on this webinar today to post some questions in the chat if they have any. And uh, we do have one from James who is joining us and it is a question for Jordan. And so the question Jordan is how did you decide on your career path? And if you could perhaps remind folks what it is you're doing today, that'd be fantastic. I am a program assistant for a podcast called Teachings in the Air, which is backed by the PHSA of BC, the Provincial Health Services Authority. And it's, it's, Interesting because one of the reasons I chose BCIT was um, radio. I was a shy kid. I didn't talk. And that's what everybody remembers of me as a young age. So it, eventually I, I, I started listening to podcasts, radio, and it, it grew into this kind of like, in, like serious enjoyment. Like it, it made me when I was I used to work at the Surrey Central Library and I seen a book called Podcasting for Dummies <laughs> and I checked it out instantly and it gave it instilled confidence in me even though it's silly it, it really did like it was on a shift cleaning and it made me think I could do this type of stuff and I started looking up anything to do with like podcasting radio using my voice because I wasn't the best at like getting my point across so after cleaning for about four years at the library they I, I finally decided to hop in at BCIT because they hit all the keywords when I when I looked up uh, like freeing your voice radio podcasting and I haven't seen a program like it and everything they offer it's it's a mix between like traditional radio and modern very modern with the podcasting so 
production is also a huge part of it all of that hit like the 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 right idea for me the, the like my final goal of schooling thank you jordan Brittany, we've got a question for you your experience as a young mother would be very very valuable news to students and perhaps a oh and perhaps a podcast might be an option as it is with jordan uh, do you have any advice for young mothers who are looking to reskill uh, or get a get a degree please share with us my advice is do it do it when they're young, like do it when they're old, just do it because the people are always saying, oh, it's not the right time. It's not the right time to do this, not the right time to do this. It's never the right time to do anything. So just do it because if you, if you show your children, you know, yes, your relationship with them might suffer a little bit because you're focusing on school and you don't get to have that un, you know, that, that unlimited amount of that um, unlimited amount of energy for them and, and spending all your time with them, they're going to see you succeed and it's going to teach them how to succeed. So unfortunately with generational trauma and generational um, abuse, we have a hard time as a community getting out of what we know. And so if you have that opportunity to show your child something different, like just do it. It's not going to be easy, but there is a quote that I have always um, I've lived by since my daughter was young and it goes nothing in life, nothing worth having in life ever came easy. Um, and that's, you know, having kids isn't easy going back to school isn't easy it's not easy doing both but your children, you know, not only you will be better for it but your children will be better for it because you're going to show them an example of like what life could be for them and and how um, you know, you made a difference in your life and you did something for yourself in order to help them. So um, I think that, you know, it's in, very important to get education or to go back to work and, uh, and do better for yourself because you're only teaching them what the world has to offer and, and what you can do for them and what they can do for themselves. It just teaches us all and it uplifts us all when one of us, um, when one of us, gets out of poverty or one of us gets out of the abusive situation that we're in or we get out of the alcohol like a alcoholic situation or drug addiction like when when one of us lifts ourselves out of that then we all slowly do because we're showing each other what is possible and we're showing our children how to do better so I think if you want to do it just do it thank you Brittany that you are just an incredibly strong woman and thank you for such a candid answer. I'm very, very thankful. Um, we're going to have one more question for Chelsea, and then I'm going to hand it over to Za. So Chelsea, if you could tell us a little bit about how you chose your career path, that would be fantastic. Yeah, sure. So, you know, growing up, I always knew that uh, I was always a hands-on learner, you know, sitting in the classrooms, thinking about going to university and getting a degree. Uh, you know, it was just, I, I really found a passion in creating and, you know, using my hands to create things. And I knew that a trade path would be a great fit for me. So I began to do my research and figure out what, what was the right fit. And I came across the machining industry and uh, it was just, it seemed like a perfect fit for my personality. And, you know, coming from a family of tradespeople, my, my dad's a floor layer, my brother's a boiler maker and my mom was a, a career counselor. So I had lots of support in finding what I wanted to do. And I kind of just jumped in with two feet and it ended up working out just great. And I really knew that I wanted to do something um, that I felt you know, was important. And now that I'm uh, an instructor, kind of giving back and passing along my knowledge and helping others. And I always wanted to do that. Um, and use my education to the fullest because, you know, in honor of my, my grandmother who was a residential school survivor, uh, she didn't get the opportunity to pursue, pursue her dreams and her education because of the abuse that she suffered. And as, uh, as well as my mom being a 60 scoop survivor, it really just made me realize I wanted to utilize my education and chase my dreams and give back as much as I can 
in, in her honor and, you know, make her proud. So that's kind of how I got where I am today. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you so much. Um, wow, thank you, all of you. I feel like I'm going to repeating the, be repeating those two words um, over and over here. And just before I pass it over to Zah, uh, I just wanna thank the BCIT Alumni Association for sponsoring this event uh, and centering these very important voices. Uh, honestly, it's just been lovely to hear from all of you. Uh, and the other folks that we wanna thank is are the uh, affinity partners of the Alumni Association who also make putting these events on possible uh, as we continue to host throughout the year. So that being said, enough from me at this point in time. And Zah, if I can pass it over to you, that, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ali. And thank you for all the work that you're doing and your team is doing. It's pretty amazing. And of course, thanks to the panelists, you know, like these are um, students that we see on a regular basis and are getting to know through BCIT Indigenous Initiatives, formerly BCIT Indigenous Services, and looking at ways that we're connecting, right, as human beings, and we'll look at ways that we're sharing and, and, and providing insight to others that are looking at this, uh, this, this path of education or this path in life. And we're just so honored to have each of you here, Chelsea, Jordan, Brittany, Nick, and Rob, and for taking the time today, it's 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 really really means a lot. And as you see in the comments, it's pretty amazing to see all the support that's out there. And you speak of family, right, Chelsea? Like your mom is a, is, a, is connected with Industry Training Authority, right? And I think there was mention from from one of the from one of the community members, uh, James. I I've, I know he's a past uh, chief with Clahoos, and I'm not sure where you're at now, James. But nice to see you on there and. Uh, you know, all the support that we have within community is pretty amazing. So with this event today, we reached out to the Coast Salish community of Squamish Nation and our friend Aaron Nelson Moody. I reached out to ask permission and guidance on how to acknowledge our alumni in a good way. The Alumni Association and Indigenous Initiatives sent the alumni panelists blankets before today's panel. We hope that they arrived. To the best of my knowledge, we have not had any government leaders try to cancel the postal system. Ooh, that might be, is that too early? Um, but can I ask the panelists to now um, take the blankets and wrap the blankets around each of you? This wrapping is the honoring of all the work you do and the connection you all have to the Coast Salish lands we reside on. You are role models for others to follow during your time at BCIT, as well as your transition to industry, where in this time of COVID you have shared is not an easy adjustment, but one you have done with strength and support from our many indigenous communities, as well as the communities here at BCIT, the Alumni Association, you see, you'll see, uh, you know, the, the names on the screen, you know, Tammy Pierce, our associate director, Corey Wilson, our executive director, Celeste Dunstan, our administrative assistant, Leah Falstead, our advisor with Indigenous Initiatives and Partnerships. I just want to take a sec. Well, our participants out there, I know we can't see everyone, but Ali and Anna, if we could raise our hands as a sign of respect and honor to our alumni and the Coast Salish lands we present from today from our team and all the community out there, OCM, Masi Cho, thank you for all you do. As well, thank you to all, the, all those that turned in, uh, tuned in today. We honor all of you and we, we value your time greatly. And this will be recorded and, and, and be, able be available for view. Um, I just wanna thank you again and thank you for taking the time Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and as always, if you have any feedback, please, please connect with us and share. Um, thank you. Thank you to each and every panelist. And uh, may everybody have a beautiful rest of your Wednesday. Thank you so much.